let's uh, let's spend a few minutes with some of the the motorcycles now. I've got a I don't know seven or eight in here that I can show you. Uh, this is a, a 1955 Motoguzi. Um, actually, uh, very similar and quite possibly, although I don't have confirmation of it, ran in the Isle of Man. Uh, very famous race, uh, 175 cc. It does not look, you know, 175 cc, not a fast bike. Uh, let me tell you, uh, this bike is light, and although I have not had it out on the road, um, and when I was taking it off my trailer, I thought it was, was empty and I popped the clutch <laughs> and it started right up on me. Wow. Because uh, it does not have a key, it does not have a, a normal starter. Um, uh, and so they would either start this on, on rollers or, um, or there's a, a, a kickstart. Unbelievable. It's a heck of a... Absolutely a gorgeous. Bike. And the little front fairing on there must just deflect so much air yeah, and just... A, a, uh, again, 6.4, not a bike designed for me. But uh, I loved it, and I couldn't pass it up when I, when I saw it. On the other side of that is a 1934 Bella Set, uh, British bike. <laughs> that is as it came, right? Um, you know, it's been cleaned up. Uh, I, I had Eastern Cycles, um, and Steve up on, in Beverly has done the work on, on all of my bikes, uh, and has just done an amazing job. Every bike here runs. Uh, and I and I have had them out, although I don't drive them any distance. Uh, that's part of the that's part of the uh, the rule is I can collect them. I'm just not allowed to, to drive them, <laughs> which seems odd, but nonetheless, it's it's what I've I've committed to. Um, starts on the first kick, just a, a beautiful, beautiful bike. Absolutely stunning. As it would have come from the factory, nothing else modified there. Great sort of fish uh, tail muffler in the back. And so on. All right. And what uh, is this? Is this so, a turbine? So it is. Um, so this is a one of nine bike. Um, it is made by a very good friend of mine, Daryl Villanueva, in Vietnam. Uh, he owns a company called Bandit Nine. Um, I own two Bandit Nine bikes. Uh, there's one actually in my living room inside. He basically takes old uh, motorcycles, in this case an old Honda, and redesigns them. So this is, is its base, a, I think it's a, uh, either a late 60s or early 70s Honda Supersport, you know, 150 or 175 cc bike. And he basically builds uh, off of that. And he builds only nine of each style, right? So there's only eight others of these in the world. In fact, there probably aren't even eight because I don't think um, he, he actually made, made nine of these. Um, what's also interesting about this bike is this bike does not have a clutch. Uh, it is a, uh, essentially an, an automatic transmission. Uh, and so uh, it's multi-speed, but um, this is the tank and uh, no clutch. And he, you know, basically it's not really a turbine. It's a turbine look, that a case that is covering the, the engine, but uh, just a, a beautiful, beautiful bike. Unbelievable. Um, I have a chrome one similar to this inside. So sort of the, the evil and uh, <laughs> the dark side and uh, the light side. That's if you will. unbelievable. Yeah, I've wow. not I, I've not had this on the road yet. Um, I'm not quite sure if I will ever take it on the road. <laughs> I'm not quite sure uh, I would like either. I said, the automatic trans, uh, the semi-automatic transmission is pretty, pretty cool. Wow. Come over here quick and I'll okay. show you a couple more. Uh, and just run through them. Uh, over here, 1924 Monet Vion, uh, French bike. Um, that was a race bike. Uh, so, you know, if you look up sort of the 1924 uh, motorcycle races, you'll see Monet Vion uh, as, as one of the the bikes there, um, that's what they would have raced in on a track, sort of a, an oval track or, or in the dirt. Um, that bike also runs. Late, uh, mid to late 60s, uh, what you would recognize as a Vespa, but you'll see the tag on this is Allstate. This was actually licensed by Sears. Uh, so Sears made Vespa-like scooters, um, or at least licensed the, the brand, and so this was a, uh, this is an Allstate. Now this has been redone, um, it's got uh, the correct type motor, but a newer motor, 
and some some other little knickknacks on it. But uh, you know, it's it's hard to, to it's hard to find exact pieces for this because they made so many of them. It's hard to determine which exactly was was from what and and finding uh, correct pieces. Sort of you know took them from where I could. Wow. Uh, the bike next to it is a 1972 uh, Moto Guzzi Ambassador. Uh, it's a 750cc. This is an original police bike. So uh, before Harley became the police bike of choice for, for many of the, particularly the West Coast uh, police departments, uh, in fact, if you look at any of the original Clint Eastwood Dirty Harry movies, um, you'll see them driving Moto Guzzi's. Uh, this is a police bike from that era. Uh, it is an original police bike. It has the correct police dash on it. In fact, it also has um, the original police siren uh, <laughs> that still works in the back of the bike uh, as well. And I've assumed you've never used that. I, <laughs> you know, I, I haven't. So let's let's see if we can. Yes, I now have, can say I have. That is very so, impressive. Uh, so there's the original uh, police siren that, that went with it. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that's a, it's a heck of a bike. You know, and it, it, they're not the fastest bikes in the world, but uh, it handles well. I've driven that. I have driven, and I've had two others uh, of Moto Guzzi's um, that I no longer have in my collection, both police bikes that I've driven in downtown Boston and, and all over the place. So, uh, you know, on the highways and, and they handle great. It's a hefty bike. Unbelievable. Uh, next to that, 1937 Triumph. Uh, that bike is uh, probably the best bike I've ever owned. Uh, starts on the first uh, kick. Uh, doesn't require me to choke the bike. Uh, it just it, it, it feels good. It's fast. It shifts perfectly. Again, uh, Steve up at Eastern Cycles did all the work on, on that bike. Um, it's just an amazing bike to drive. I uh, said I don't get out much, uh, but you know I have taken up and down the the, the street and maybe a little longer uh, <laughs> sometimes. But uh, uh, everything is registered. Everything uh, does have plates. Not everything has plates on it at the moment, but everything is registered, insured, and does have plates. Unbelievable. And then the last one is a civilian uh, Moto Guzzi. That's an Eldorado, so that's an 850. The Ambos were 750. The Eldos were, were 850s. Uh, you could, the, the primary difference, as you'll see, is uh, the, um, the dash. So a civilian had uh, two gauges on the dash, uh, and the, uh, the, the police had a single, uh, a single gauge on the dash. Uh, that one does have F-graded uh, crash bars. It has the police floorboards and the police kickstand, uh, mainly because I, I like the look. Uh, and um, and, and I think the handlebars are also the, the police bars on, on that as well. Looks very comfortable too. Uh, they, they're really honest, they're extremely heavy. Uh, so I think they're, they're misleadingly heavy, but they, they drive and they handle uh, really well and they are comfortable. A couple of interesting things up here. We'll just start with some of the knickknacks. Uh, old machine that they would teach kids in Germany how to drive uh, <laughs> on. There are glass panels that slide in and out, and so that was a driver's head. Uh, old uh, soapbox derby race uh, vehicle. Um, uh, it came actually out of Foxborough. Uh, it, it was not mine, but I did find it actually at Hershey, Pennsylvania. And I ha used to have a collection of them, but I had to keep that one because it's local. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> 1920 Indian. That uh, goes without saying what that is. That's just uh, a spectacular uh, motorcycle. That has run, although I have not run it as of late. And right out of Springfield, Mass, uh -huh. I'm correct? Uh, yes. <laughs> um, another Porsche, but not your, your normal Porsche. Um, this actually was a, this is what they call, um, and, I'm, and I'm blanking right now, uh, but basically it's to ride on the snow. Uh, you put each of your feet in one of the, the small skis here, and uh, you can steer yourself down the mountain in the snow. Uh, what's interesting about this is that the entire unit packs up into the inside here and was designed to fit inside a 911. So uh, there are rumors that you could get up to 120 miles an hour on this. 
I don't know how you'd stop, and I don't know if you'd survive. Yes, thoughts and prayers uh, is, on that. I have never taken this out, uh, <laughs> but you know, in the given I have a tractor and Porsche vehicles, uh, I figured uh, I needed this um, uh, this sort of Porsche uh, snowmobile, if you will, for for the collection. That is really very cool. Wow. Uh, the last couple of things I just love to show you up here is uh, some beautiful some beautiful work done by uh, a local artist in Roslindale. His name is Michael Ullman. Um, if uh, you've never had the opportunity to meet Michael Ullman, you may have seen Michael Ullman's work. Uh, one of the more famous things Michael uh, is known for, at least in the in, in most recent past, is that in the, the last Mad Max movie, uh, there was a scene where on, on there was a, a person standing in front of one, or tied on bungees to one of the front of the vehicles playing a flaming guitar. Uh, Michael made that flaming guitar. Wow. Um, Michael and his entire family, his, his father, um, uh, design and, and build sort of objects, uh, found art. Um, his brother is, is also an artist and a musician, a drummer, uh, teaches at Berkeley, and his mother is an amazing photographer. If you ever get a chance, please uh, look him up, uh, Michael Ullman uh, in, in Roslindale. He and his father built this. This is called Barn Finds. So I thought it was, was very appropriate to, to add this to the collection. Uh, not can't get much more meta than having a barn inside of a barn. Yeah, I would agree. Um, and then Michael also built, you know, what he's also very famous for, uh, and, and maybe you can zoom in from up there, uh, is uh, he builds uh, beautiful motorcycles out of found art. So I have another one of these inside the house and a couple other pieces. Everything that he's made here has come from some other you know, type of, of machinery or object. So you know, the thing holding the rear wheel uh, is, is from a bike, uh, a Pinarello bike. You can, if you look closely, you can uh, potentially identify so, some different things here from, uh, from from different types of equipment. Uh, just in uh, this was from a Galaxy from an, from an old bicycle. Uh, it's uh, it's one of my favorite pieces of art. He's just an amazing artist and, and also just a, a fantastic guy. Absolutely gorgeous. Oh my God. The attention to detail. You would think that it could run. Yeah. It's so so detailed. You know, all the detail in terms of the brakes, uh, the cables, everything that would connect to where it's connected, the, sh the front shocks, uh, the brakes, just, uh, it's just unbelievable. The gauges, unbelievable. very talented family, like I said, just a, a great guy. Awesome. So those are the bikes. Dave, thank you so much for the tour of your oh, my amazing collection. Uh, it's unbelievable. and. Um, I can't wait to see them out on the road and at the Lars again. Well, uh, soon enough. So, some have already been out and some will, will, will be out this summer. So excited to, to do that and thank you for coming out. Thanks a lot.